Good day everyone! Today, I am going to report about ISM code the various ship operation, specifically the naval ship. Red alert on the Atlantic. Carrier Strike Group 8, a heavily armed naval formation headed by an aircraft carrier, is out on the Atlantic to rehearse a real case scenario. The purpose of the four-week maneuver is to practice the tactical interplay between the warships prior to engaging in combat. Three nations are involved. Any mission, anytime, anywhere, we're ready to go. But before we start, let us bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. Provisions of the ISM Code in Naval Ships The provisions of Chapter 9 of the Salas Convention and the ISM Code apply to the following with effect from July 1, 2002. All ships of 500 gross tonnage and above engage on international voyages and propelled by mechanical means. Passenger ships engage on international voyages the companies or the company means the owner of the ship or any other organization or person, such as the manager or the bare boat charterer who has assumed the responsibility for operation of the ship from the ship owner and who on assuming such responsibility has agreed to take over all duties and responsibility imposed by the ISM Code. The Naval Ship The purpose of the ISM Code In order to comply with the ISM Code, the company operating the vessel has to be audited first after they submit their Safety Management System Manual or SMS and is approved by Flag Administration or Recognized Organization or the RO. Once a company is audited, the, company, the document of compliance or DOC will be issued or validity by five years. Every company is subject to auditing every year, three months before and after anniversary date and before DOC expiration date. Upon issuing DOC to company, each vessel can be audited to verify vessel compliance with ISM code. Each vessel will be issued SMC or the Safety Management Certificate valid for five years and subject to verification of compliance with ISM code between second and third years of certificate validity. The application of the code will lead to the issue of two certificates. The Document of Compliance or DOC will be issued to the company following a successful audit of the sure side aspects of the safety management system. Evidence required that the system has been in operation on at least one type of ship in the company's fleet for a period of three months. Specific to ship types at time of audit. Valid for five years. Subject to annual verification within three months of anniversary date. Number two is the Safety Management Certificate or the SMC. Issued to each ship following audit. Evidence that SMS has been in operation of four three months prior to audit. Valid DOC required, valid for five years. Subject to one verification between the second and third anniversaries with a provision for more frequent audits if necessary. This is more likely in the early days of ISM code implementation. Safety management system manual consists of the following elements. Commitment from top management. A top tier. Policy Manual, a procedures manual to document what is done in board the ship. 
during normal operations and in emergency situation. Procedures for conducting both internal and external audits to ensure the ship is doing what is documented in the procedures manual. A designated person or DP assured to serve as the link between the ship's and shore staff and to verify the SMS implementation. A system for identifying where actual practices do not meet those that are documented and for implementing associated corrective action. Regular management reviews. The following videos are the documentaries about Navy strategies entering the sea. Many people de describe destroyers as kind of a, they call them greyhounds, uh, but they also refer to them as the workhorses of the Navy, pretty much because they're almost like this Swiss Army knife. Obviously, in a name, we destroy stuff. The mission of the destroyer is basically we're a warship, basically just to bring the heat. The mission of the destroyer when you go on deployment is to protect the carrier. We have underwater detection and tracking and also engagement capabilities. We have surface warfare capabilities. We have a lot of capabilities so far as surface and air interception. Yeah, buddy. So life on, the, on a destroyer, it's its not a normal working environment. It can be really hectic. It can, things change at a drop of a hat. We could be called upon to go anywhere at any time. And there's very few of us on these ships. It's exciting, it can be boring, um, but always dynamic. It's small, smaller, definitely smaller than aircraft carriers and all that. But it being so small, you learn a little bit about everything. like. You know everybody, you get to, to see what everybody else does. We're all cross-trained individuals, and I certainly found that down to the most junior sailor we've got. They are uh, kind of rough and ready to get into whatever needs to be done day to day. Um, there's no one just doing uh, their core role on, on a destroyer if that destroyer is actually succeeding at its mission set. With 270 or 340 people, no one can stand on the sidelines. You learn a lot of your rate on a destroyer? It depends on the day, but most days it's, you know, you wake up, get out of your rack, get ready, go get dressed, shower, whatever you do what you gotta do, and you go to work. No matter what you do, you always have a watch and stand. So for me, for example, I stand watch in the morning and at night. And all the time in between is uh, work time or personal time. Everyone stands watch because the ship has to be manned 24 seven, right? We're on the water. So we have to basically be eyes and ears at all times. We also have drills during the day. It could be damage control drills. We also have training, um, our normal mess decks and galley hours, uh, recreational time. So different people there, they could be on a, like a nocturnal schedule. They could be absolutely sleeping during the day and working or standing watch during the night. It just depends. So if we don't keep track of the days or if we don't like try to go out, It'll be Wednesday for like a week straight and won't, won't even realize it. So like the first time I went underway, it was Wednesday for like three days because if you think about it, our days are in two parts. So it'll be like Monday part one and two. That's how we keep track of it. So it's just trying to keep track of those types of things. Going into the Thunderdome. My name is Fire Controlman Aegis First Class Surface Warfare Amanda Michelle Krellis. I'm from Vass, North Carolina. I'm a spy technician on board, so my radar is the primary air and surface search radar, high power, 360 degree, multifunctional phase array. We're able to pick up uh, targets from a really far distance away and be able to track them even further and help our ship be able to have early warning for any inbound air or surface combatants. We're gonna make sure we know you. Who are you? What are your intentions? This is a U.S. Navy warship. We are not to be messed with. I mean, this is 
sometimes it's slow, but sometimes it's absolutely the opposite. And then, like, almost immediately, it could just mellow out again. It's just... Exercise. Set. Yellow. Safe. Weapons box your one. Yellow. Safe. Air. Oh, I can't wait to shoot a missile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one, seven, two. Success. Okay, my name is Ashley Lisset Sepulveda. Uh, my job title is electronic technician. I am from Miami, Florida, uh, but my entire family is from Puerto Rico. I actually did not want to go to a ship. I didn't know any surface ships at all. I only seen carriers, and that's because of movies. <laughs> my job on a destroyer, I'm an electronics technician. Another word that they call us as ETs is the everything tech. So it's pretty funny because we do essentially fix everything on the ship, from phones to s simple speakers. Uh, to more complex systems like weapon systems, uh, communication systems. So, yeah, we, we get hands on with pretty much anything electronic. I just always loved engineering since a little kid. I always say that. I just thought everything that I'm doing is really, really cool. I get a little bit like nerdy when it comes to what I do. I definitely love DDG. I'm really glad that I came to a small boy versus a big tech because I get to touch all of the equipment as an electronics technician. And that's why I joined because I love being an ET. I did uh, engineering a lot in high school and I went to college before this. Here I'm getting the experience as I wanted as an electronic technician, being hands-on with all the equipment. Because we're in such close per um, premises with all the equipment, uh, one person essentially will be able to do all. Versus on a carrier or a bigger deck, they have separate, several departments that can handle, let's just say, one specific equipment. So they'll be working on that one for most of their time. Rather than an ET on a small boat, you will be working on everything. Okay, so my first name is Victor, last name Rota. I'm a GSE. I'm currently the LPO for EMO4, which is the gas turbine electrical. My main role here is to make sure that whatever the bridge calls, that we're able to provide propulsion for that, no matter what. So I was originally born in Granada, uh, Nicaragua, and then I came to the United States uh, at in 99 and I lived in Pennsylvania so it's actually I was an undergrad at Penn State and then uh, when I showed up here it was it's nothing what you expect so I'm a, I'm a gas turbine technician electrical uh, what that means is I work with uh, jet engines that uh, produce uh, power and propulsion I oversee a work center of eight people and what we are in charge of is making sure that these engines produce uh, propulsion and electricity for the ship. The first time you go into an engineering uh, space, you're kind of in awe, because you just don't realize how big an engineering space is. You also don't realize how big the ship is. Like, it kind of looks big from the outside, but then you realize how really big it is once you're inside and you're like, there's a little significant about walking through the space. Um, it's loud, very loud. You know, you have propulsion machinery going on in there. You have all types of stuff going on there. Everything that keeps the ship afloat and running is in there. So it's loud, it's hot. This is the heart of everything. Everything starts down here. So when we're getting ready to get on the way, down here is at the busy time. Everybody's trying to start systems, trying to start fuel, blue oil, so on and so forth. So these engines put out for like 40,000 horsepower and can push a 505 foot end uh, ship through their water at like 30 plus knots. So it's pretty incredible. It's incredible we only have four and these four engines do a great job of doing it. The three generators that we own, that literally powers everything on the ship. It powers everything from our water pumps that give us drinking water to the radar. You know, everything is powered by us. We're, pre we're pretty much the ones that supply power to everybody, and then we turn that over to the electrician's mates who actually route the power where it needs to go. So we meet halfway with them. It's how, it's how we make our drinking water. You have somebody come around every hour and check on it and make sure we have enough water for the crew. Hot water to the whole ship for showering and cooking and all that. Back 
there. Literally, you can see the shaft going all the way back to the back end of the ship. And uh, you can tell, like, if you know, even if you're not topside, you can kind of tell how fast we're going based on how fast the shaft is rotating. This is like one of the great things about doing what I do. You, uh, it's never a dull day. You always, you always got something new going on. My full name is Joshua Sanders, and I am GM2 Sanders, and I'm a gunner's mate. I'm from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Before I joined the Navy, I didn't know there was different types of ships, you know, just based off of what you see on TV. Um, big ships, small ships. We're on a smaller ship, but um, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything at all. So as a gunner's mate, we're responsible for all small arms uh, regarding pistols, shotguns, rifles, and torpedo tubes, and various amounts of other equipment on the ship, uh, also 50 calibers and 240s, so all types of all types of small arms and cruiser weapons we're responsible for maintaining them, issuing to the crew, anything in our job that we shoot. We always have to do uh, pre-fires, so that's making sure that the weapons are good to go, make sure that they function properly. So it's like, okay, cool, we had a fun day of shooting, now we gotta clean up. Okay. I think that we might have to just forego the, the swabbing at the moment since you... Who, I live in a space that has 24 racks for females and we have three sinks, one shower and two toilets. It's weird because I've never worked anywhere where like you kind of are, you know, like you go from being in a professional setting to like in your pajamas just hanging out like within 200 feet. You get accustomed to it. Yeah, it's small. It's uh, it's not a lot of wiggle room, but it's it's like yours, you know. And you just get comfortable in it. You just gotta <laughs> make it yours, you know. Here it is. This is home. I like to. I can sit up in it, which is pretty nice. Cause otherwise, you're kind of constricted to this little like tinder box of love. And. Uh, we're, we're allowed to have like an 8x11 sized area for, for family photos or your kitty cat, your doggy, goldfish, whatever you want. Um, we each have our EVDs or emergency escape breathing devices just in case, you know, bad business happens, lights go down, there's a fire and smoke, we can clock that guy on and we've got good breathing air for about 15 minutes to be able to egress out of this space in topside. These are our hurricane straps that keep us inside the beds. I'm sure the more tinier folks, uh, there's a little bit more margin for error. It's all right, you know, you just gotta remember where you are because if not, you know, you'll wake up and hit your head. Uh, it's not too bad, it's, it's really not. Just hop in there, you know, like, literally. Bam. Right on in, you know? And it's comfortable. Oh yeah, honestly, somebody told me this when I first entered the Navy. It's literally the best sleep you'll ever get because the ship's rocking, so. Even if it's like three or four hours, it's probably some of the best sleep you'll ever have. The XO is very keen on if the light touches it, then there could be dust. So he creeps around really, really thoroughly. So, in anticipation of him coming here, I'm just gonna while we're talking, just kind of straighten up people's business. Gear drift, crash on the deck, sleeping bag and the angle arms. So we just did Birthing 3's uh, birthing inspection. It's something that we do daily. Uh, the premise behind it is that we this is our largest birthing on board. Um, roughly 100 people live in here. And so if we can't keep it clean, uh, the, 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 just the, the sheer nature of that many people living in this space, it just adds to the, the ability of the body to fight off the infections, the germs, etc., the crud, the cough. So um, keeping it clean every day is a requirement, and it's it's about keeping the crew healthy. That's my guy. That's my guy right Let's go, baby. Let's, Let's get this gym. The people of us.
So the gyms are very small, they get very crowded, and they get very hot and sweaty. That's the best thing about ship life, you get creative with tiny spaces, you figure out how to make it work. You don't know what's going to happen in the middle of the ocean. You don't know if you are out there fighting a fire or a damage or we get hit by something. You could be, you would have to swim, you would have to pull yourself up. You don't know what dangers you will face and if your body is not physically prepped for the stamina endurance that you're about to face, then you are in, in danger of yourself and maybe putting other people in danger because they might have to go back to help you because you can't physically help yourself. Kind of prison workouts in a way, I suppose. I mean, it's, I, mean I run on treadmill as well. You're kind of just like, you're running and then we start taking a turn, you're like, whoa, and then it's like a hill, it's like, ah, so it's a little bit, a little bit more interesting than just running on flat land treadmill. The things get heavier, then things get lighter, and then things get heavier. The four of us work together, we're all GSEs. We all work in the same division, so we probably spent like 40, 80 hours a week together. So we do everything together. We like, we all sleep in the same birthing. We go to lunch together, we go to breakfast together. We work out together. It's good, you know, we have this good camaraderie. We always, we're always like, you know, of course we get mad at each other, just like you would with anybody, but it doesn't last very long. You know, you're gonna be with this guy whole underway that's the whole month like you know we get along great you know he's like a brother to me and vice versa you know we all know each other's families and stuff like you know like you you end up being real close like even outside of work we hang out together Ooh, we've got chicken wings we've got mozzie sticks we ain't got no mozzie sticks we got jalapeno poppers, pizza, some zap. Our CSs do do the best that they can, honestly, with having to feed so many people three times a day, uh, especially when they're given the opportunity to get a little frisky with it and, and throw a little of their own flair. That's always when people go crazy over it. Every day we serve about almost 300 people. We wake up around 4.30 in the morning. Uh, Cook breakfast, lunch, uh, and dinner. We usually get about get around, get out of here around like maybe eight o'clock after cleaning and all that stuff. On smaller ships, we make more things from scratch. Oh, it's you know it boosts the morale. You know that's like one of the biggest thing is if the food tastes good and everyone's fed well, then the morale of the crew is is always high. He's thirsty. He's been working all day. <laughs> John, so, the best thing about being underway, everybody makes fun of each other. Yeah. Especially Tranko. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> That's like, I never do that. Like, we all literally depend on it. If, like, EM1 fails to do his job, then, like, we don't have any lighting anywhere. No matter how much power we produce, you know? And so on and so forth. So, like, we give each other a lot of crap, but, you know, like, we all work literally shoulder on shoulder, so. It's kind of like a, you know, it's like your brother, you hate him, but you love him. In the middle of the ocean, we make our own water, we make our own power, and we make our own support system. Your loved ones, they're elsewhere. Um, and you really just have email or snail mail or care packages. So you got these people that you work with that all of a sudden are your support system that are there helping you whenever things may not be going right at home or you're missing something like holidays or birthdays or uh, births of children it feels like a family it's a good feeling it's a good feeling to know you have so many people who have your back and vice versa it's it's kind of almost like you're you're given family you can't exactly choose who you're on the ship with after a time people just grow on you you know you have to engage with these people on the daily especially on a destroyer the brotherhood you know I never really had people to you know say you know what hey I got your back you know the way I look at it they are pretty much my brothers you know and I hope that i that I've been a good brother to them as they have been to me since I've been in I've never met anyone who fails to give like 
more, less than 100 percent you know like everybody's always willing to be up for the task we all know uh how important it is to rely on one another like if i fail that person fails and so it's a domino effect no matter what rank you are no matter what rate you are you're here for a reason and everybody has a job it has a purpose and we all take care of each other the crew is going to become a second part of family and they're going to be the ones having your back when things go wrong i couldn't not recommend going on a destroyer it's it's definitely a an interesting lifestyle um, definitely not the easiest so if you're up for a challenge it's definitely a place to consider. You get the real uh, feeling of being a sailor and being in the Navy, which is being part of a crew. You get the sense of pride of like, you know, not just serving your country, but like, you know, like being part of like a command that can uh, do all, all these missions. And, you know, you, you see the fruits of your labor every day. Like what you work and what you do literally comes to fruition all the time you walk around. It's sometimes it's card games and joking around and, and goofing. But you can't really, when you're standing on like this steel ground, you can't really forget what you're here for. Thank you for watching and listening our topic. Hope you get some knowledge in our lesson. Thank you.